uh, as we grow older the the things that we will be regretting is about what we did not do so we seldom regret about what we did do hi my name is balaji vishwanathan i am the ceo of inventor robotics welcome to backstage with millionaires Today I'm going to be sharing my journey uh, of entrepreneurship over the last uh, 15 years and how I got to this point. So uh, the, my paternal side is pri primarily of bankers. Uh, my grandfather, my father are all come from a banking background. And one of the uh, most interesting books that I have ever gone through is a handbook of about like 500 entrepreneurial ideas. Like you know, what is the kind of investment needed? Like what is the kind of uh, probability and so on. So I've never found a equally interesting entrepreneurial book. Uh, so it, it had everything from mushroom plantation to building like you know test tubes and so on. So that that that, that I was going through in fourth and fifth grade, I I spent more on that book than any of my. school books that there was a uh, fascinating so i i told my father i have to get a loan and start a mushroom uh, plantation at at home i said like no uh, so but but so i had to wait until i was 17 to uh, start it out so it was a uh, basically a photocopying uh, thing that i was uh, doing so typically uh, like you know in, in the indian uh, uh in the universities the, the photocopies are typically quite expensive so people used to like you know take like you know photocopy elsewhere and get it so i made that into extremely scalable business i was at one point uh, photocopying like 50000 to 60000 pages a day i was as making about uh, 7000 to 8000 rupees uh, back in 2000 2001 that was it was like fairly decent uh, decent money in fact uh, it was way more than my college tuition fee so it was like pretty uh, pretty awesome and uh, that that was uh, fascinating so that what i did for a year that was one of my most uh, business where i learned the most it was it was like you know everything from how do we make the like you know cash flow what is the inventory everything uh, uh, and then in my when i entered my sophomore year uh, i was looking at uh, how do we uh, like you know build a uh like a sort of a technology school for uh, artificial intelligence so my friend and i we were working on multiple artificial intelligence projects and we found that there was no kind of way for uh, st uh, students to learn uh, ai because most of the institutes that were there like was teaching basic programming with the untrained educators so we uh, made a full plan on like you know buying a uh, used computers and then like setting up a lab and then teaching people ai but one of my biggest regrets in life is uh, we didn't uh, we, we didn't proceed through we thought like you know the competition will come and all these coaching institutes they will get in like we're talking about 2001 2002 when people were not thinking about ai we could have said up that there was a big mistake so it's basically like you know um, as we grow older the the things that we will be regretting is about what we did not do so we seldom regret about what we did do so then the rest of my uh, education like i was building up uh, uh, ai algorithms uh, in research i was i got a bunch of uh, global award, uh, international awards on research and innovation got scholarship to do at the university of maryland uh, went there for my graduate studies i i did my uh, masters and uh, during my summer uh, uh, after the first year i got internship into a top startup uh, uh, building uh, uh, ai tools for the defense sector and and i i made the second big uh, i uh, 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 regret uh, in that so at, at one point the startup ran out of funding during my internship so they fired almost our entire core team so the entire core team had left and since i was an intern they didn't need to uh, lay uh, fire me off so i was still there and then by end of that summer they got they secured a big round of funding but they didn't have any team to actually like who knew uh the technology so i was the only one who knew the technology that they were building so that that ceo was like i could like you know give you any offer like you know uh take it up and uh, like you could even at some point become the cto but you right now take up the because you are the only engineer who knows because everyone has as left an and we have like 5 million in funding like you know it's it's not like money is not the thing and uh, i made a pretty stupid decision i thought like okay, i want to finish my phd program i have to uh, do this thing and uh, um so that is that is again like very stupid move like i could have been a part of a successful startup and uh, and that was in the line of my research too so it was uh, so but uh, like you know in the hindsight is 2020 so i, I joined uh, microsoft uh, the next year uh, so i was among the youngest engineers to be hired into the core os division so we were building the 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 the, the core part of the uh, microsoft uh, windows operating system 
So within Microsoft, they created a new group uh, called Live Labs. It is to be a startup factory. They said like, you know, we will take up 200 people, we will select 200 people across the company who will be put into like, you know, uh, they'll be creating startups within Microsoft and then that could be eventually scaled up. So you can create startups within the security of Microsoft and with all the talent that Microsoft already has. So I was uh, selected for that program and then we, we created uh, startups within that thing. So that was one of the uh, pretty interesting periods um, in that I realized that why we should not worry about large companies. So often people think that, oh, Google and Microsoft would come and fight with me. There is no reason to worry about. At Microsoft, our team had enough money, enough talent, enough resources, enough distribution, uh, distribution channels, brand and everything. Pretty much, uh, we did not beat any any uh, critical. I mean, any any critical startup in in uh, in uh, what we did. So um, that was the, uh, so. If if Microsoft uh, with all its money, talent, uh, and engineering resources uh, could not do it, pretty much like you know, other companies also have the same issue. Like you know, big companies have their own sort of internal challenges to do it. So that, that is uh, that's a big uh, like you know, sort of a big relief. Like you know, uh, 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 after that, like when I started companies, I didn't have to worry about larger companies. But if a larger company is in the play. Most likely, it's a good thing because, like, if things do not go well, they could buy you, buy you out. Uh, so I, uh, after a couple of years, I, I was there for about four years at Microsoft, and then I quit. I came back to India. I I, uh, I ran my first, I built my first startup uh, of my own, which was an edtech education. So um, building like a Coursera kind of thing, but uh, one and a half years before Coursera. So uh, how do we, uh, like, you know, the online education is going to be the key. How do we build a, 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 a key platform for online education? But I went around to all the VCs and they were all like, why would people study online and uh, the bandwidth is not there and, and so on. So, um, and then a year later, like, you know, Udemy and uh, then Udacity, Coursera and all those things came and suddenly all those guys realized, oh, this is the, like, the, the same guys who, whom I was talking a uh, year, year, year and a half ago. All those guys who said, like, you know, this will not work because nobody has a clue. So even the greatest of VCs, most often it is to, uh, down to luck and they're betting on the right people, but nobody has a clue of what technology they have to bet on. That I've realized that thing enough is that, so just because they say that uh, this is the technology that is going to work, that makes the uh, thing as long as you just can survive with revenue. So I, uh, I uh, could not uh, survive without the funding, so I uh, pivoted, so started with another uh, friend of mine with the fintech. But again, like, you know, back in 2011, 12, nobody cared about fintech. They were like, well, big companies will not, big finance companies are not going to uh, like move into technology. It's, going, so it's very slow starting, saying that's, that's again, uh, uh, that, that was again a, a, a problem. Uh, so I I, uh, uh, I was also consulting briefly for uh, US political parties with their marketing campaigns. So I was uh, building up campaigns for them, uh, but uh, at some point it was like quite hypocritical of them. So for instance, they outsourced, so that there was a campaign called uh, Keep the Jobs in Oklahoma. And they out, uh, so do not outsource jobs out of Oklahoma. And they outsourced that marketing campaign to me. <laughs> So I was like, you know, talking to the political strategist, like, dude, like, you know, do, 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 don't you see that irony? Like, nobody sees the irony in that, in this whole thing. Like, you know, it's all like, you know, it's all politics, man. It's, it just goes that way. Um, so it, it was making me good amount of money. I was like, you know, able to run marketing campaigns. Overall, like, you know, I didn't find it quite uh, satisfying. There was money, but uh, I, that, that's not who I am. Uh, so I, I returned, this was, I was, I was running out of Mumbai, uh, India. Uh, so I, I, I got back to the US and then focused fully on the fintech uh, company, got a couple of rounds of funding. So uh, here, there I made the third mistake I would. Uh, so so we had like, you know, good uh, momentum going on. And then I met Paul Graham for a Y Combinator, this thing. So it was like, you know, Paul Graham said, like, you know, can you close one large deal and then I can get you into Y Combinator. So I was like uh, trying to close a bunch of large companies at, at a single, like, you know, JP Morgan and uh, uh, Credit Suisse and Fidelity. I was targeting three of the largest fintech uh, financial companies and tried to close them at once it was like very uh, very stupid move very so i was not as well prepared for uh, 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 each of this and then i i uh, lost uh, uh, each of those three deals and then y combinator funding also did not happen saying that is one of the uh, so should have like spent with one customer and then closed it rather than trying to prematurely scale that is another 
uh, the, the the third uh, colliding so then um, so so i have run three startups uh, each of them had their own couple of times one time it was very early one time it was like i was did not focus a lot on the sales and third time it was not the right business model so three different reasons so i wanted to like you know join a slightly more successful startup and and then see how they they, they do so i joined a startup called black duck in boston so there there was a lot of uh, new insights on how a good successful startup uh, works and so when you look at that product you would not think that it is a billion dollar idea so the the product is about how do you help uh, uh, companies identify whether they are using open source code or not it will run through scan and then it tell you whether you are the code that you are using is uh, like with a valid license or not like i would never ever have thought that this is a billion dollar idea but then yes they 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 sold to uh, that was execution but so the idea could be very simple they executed in a way where almost every major fortune 500 company was a product, uh, user of that product uh, so 400 of the fortune 500 companies were using that product so like billion dollar ideas are not uh, they, not something that is it is about like in a simple idea taken and executed so well that every customer potential customer in the world would be buying that product so a lot of lot of that learning although it is in a very very different a uh, segment from what we do a lot of the learning uh, that i learned from that company we are applying in this company how do we build partnerships the channel the revenues and how do we like be very focused in one particular thing so this this came up about two and a half years ago and i, I believe this is a time for robotics revolution at commanda uh, and so the the i was trying to build the robotics revolution in 2005 2006 in uh, during my masters program where during my masters program was in how do we make a large number of robots collaborate and how do we build the uh, neural networks for that but nobody cared about either about robotics or neural networks uh, 12 years ago but uh, things had changed in the decade and um, and the companies around the area i worked i worked in a place called burlington in the north of boston around that uh, place where there were a lot of uh, uh, top robotics companies boston dynamics and there is a company called kiva there is i robot that is making the roomba cleaner so all of them were like you know within 5 minutes from my place it is i i drive those uh, by those offices it's fascinating so the the time for robotics had come and then also looking at what do the those companies miss why like you know they have the best technology they have the great engineers and still they do not have the product execution that and that is what the company I worked in they, they had a simple idea but they had executed really well and those the boston dynamics and those they have extremely good complex ideas with great engineers but they were not executing to the point where they can be a profitable company so can i use like you know their like you know uh, innovative concepts and the ideas that i learned working in a startup and put them together how do we build uh, build a pipeline of robots it need not be as complicated as a boston dynamics but executed well how can we put it in every possible a uh, customer location so that that became uh, invento so uh, i moved back here uh, in uh, august 2016 and i was active on a network called cora um, and um, cora I, i joined in 2012 uh, when i joined it was actually a network for silicon valley gossips like you know if cora had been just a silicon valley gossip thing it would have died like there were many other startups that also came in that also died but cora became diversified into a knowledge a network and uh, and initially i started for fun um, like it was it was uh, fascinating to engage with a lot of uh, people uh, the relationship continued so i now it's almost 7 years now since i've been uh, on cora so the the network kind of really uh, diversified uh, this was not something i planned out or thought out but this is this has happened and most of my team was also hired through cora um so this was uh, the, the so it became a, a good happy story in that sense like you know the, so uh, uh, so now we are a team of 25 now we are, we are uh, our dream and goal is quite big so uh, uh, our company is inventor robotics that we formed in 2016 the the goal there's a there's a bigger picture goal on how do we build hardware uh, revolution in india so a uh, uh, couple of uh, weeks ago i was in las vegas launching our product in the consumer electronics show this is the largest technology show on earth where 5400 companies from google samsung lg uh, to like you know bmws and all they they showcase the latest technology there were only three indian companies in the overall thing and we were 
uh, likely the only Indian manufactured product in the whole uh, thing. That is like you know uh, that is happy for us, but in a way it is it's a sudden thing. India does not have enough of products that it puts on a global uh, stage, and and so in a way we want to be the Sony of the the thing. So Sony is a big inspiration story for us. It, there was a time when Sony kind of like you know changed the world. Not just that they 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 completely rewrote what Japan is about. Until Sony came, Japan was known for like you know unbranded inferior products that they would they would do. But Sony changed the whole story of Japan. So in a way, for us, like fundamental philosophy for us is: can we be that Sony? Can we change the way people think of Indian products? Can we have a product that is made for the world? But as a product, we want to be looking at us: is people have been talking about robotics for a long time. It is. We are not the first robotics company. There have been uh, there are, uh, plenty of robotics companies. There have been plenty of robotics failures. Um, so it is primarily about how do we bring the hardware and software together and and provide that engagement. That a uh, lot of it will be driven through the software. The greatness have to like the the has to come through hardware, but that actual daily execution has to come through software. So every computing era is 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 defined by a uh, by a single input device. So the Microsoft's era, uh, like you know, the from the 80s, 90s, was driven by the mouse and the graphical user interface. So that changed completely the from the IBM era of like you know the 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 monitors with the green ter ter terminals and so that Microsoft's thing was the GUI and the and the and the mouse. Then the 2000s and 2010s is the Apple's computing era, where they changed. Uh, you know, in an iPod they had that uh, click wheel. And then in the uh, iPhone, they had the multi-touch, so you can like you know zoom out. You can now that is like you know it, now it looks very co common and cliched. In 2007, it was like fascinating that that changed iPhone is I can pinch and zoom and that 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 changed. So everything is defined by a single core in the interface. For us, it is about the conversation. So our whole computing interface is going to be guided by speech. And we have already put in in about 15 different locations, uh, and we are uh, the initial data is the 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 level of conversation people are having is substantially deeper than what they have it in Alexa or Siri and Google. So that's that's the core of it. So can we crack the speech problem that every big uh, uh, so our competitors here all are very very super large. So Amazon is putting its full strength behind speech. Google is putting the strength. Microsoft, uh, IBM, Apple. So the largest the five technology companies. One of the top two big problems they all have speech as the the, the defining uh, things. But then, like you know, the things that I learned uh, at Microsoft is do not worry about large companies. Large companies are their enemy, their own enemy. So this we are actually talking to the uh, Tokyo Olympics. Tokyo Olympics is coming in next year. So we are uh, talking to them on the, the, the this thing. So uh, we are uh, we have already sent them a proposal. We're working out on the finer details because Japan is looking at this kind of a human experience because there are going to be people from hundred different languages uh, speaking. Like you know, whether they are French or Hindi or Chinese, they are going to be coming out there. How do we provide a consistent, superior experience through conversations and helping them? Whether they are they are looking for vegetarian food, or they are they are looking for the best sushi, or they just want to stick to a burger, or or like you know checking into the hotel, finding taxi, getting into the stadiums, or like you know getting into excursion trips, or getting into their bullet trains, or can we? Is one example of uh, so when when we when when people imagine robots, they are all about oh this like my jobs are going to be away and all those things. 25 years ago, people said the same thing about PC. So, the the whole thing is a whole range of new applications that are going to come in, like you know, for you to travel around the world, for you to get the experience in a retail store to prevent your your favorite shops and those things from getting uh, getting shut down, for you to get a great uh, healthcare experience, for you to for uh, like you know for companions of uh, like you know really rapidly aging population, to things like you know managing disasters. It is. It is going to be a whole new, di different world. And 20 years later, you can like you know laugh with your sons and grandsons that oh like you know back in my time people were so worried about robots. Like you know why? What is the thing to be for? That's that's the future. This is my journey, starting from dreaming about like you know growing mushrooms in rural India to building the future of uh, robotics. If you uh, find uh, somebody else who might be helped by this video, uh, do share with them. And also do comment uh, below, and I can uh, personally answer some of the uh, queries. Thanks for watching.